Hi, this is Craig Stocks here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. <clears throat> Today's video is going to be a little different. I want to talk about the uh, three telescope systems we that we own here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. Uh, most of the scopes here belong to clients who are simply hosting their systems here. Uh, but we do have three that we own. And I want to talk through those and talk a little bit about how we have them set up and how we use them. Well, the first system I want to talk about is the DreamScope. It's a 16-inch uh, Dream Systems Astrograph. Uh, it's a fast Newtonian f3.75 with a 1500 millimeter focal length. It, it gather, gathers a lot of light really fast. Uh, it's equipped with an ASI 6200mm Pro monochrome camera and that has a uh, filter wheel with LRGB, HA, and O3 uh, filters. Those are all chroma filters. Uh, we don't have a rotator on it, which I have not found to be a problem, although I do have rotators on the other systems. Um, it's sitting on a Paramount ME mount, which is uh, it's an older mount, uh, which actually we've had real good luck with them. Uh, this one has upgraded electronics, so it's got the same control board as the Paramount ME2. And I, I usually run it guided. Uh, although I have also run it unguided with uh, 10 minute subs unguided and to be honest I don't really notice much difference between guiding and not guiding. Uh, it's sitting on one of our piers that we manufacture here uh, and then you'll notice behind it there's a server cabinet and that houses the computer as well as the kind of the auxiliary equipment uh, like an unmanaged ethernet switch, a small uh, UPS battery backup and an a remote power switch that you can use remotely to power individual pieces on and off. So for instance if you want to power cycle the mount or power cycle the camera you can do that remotely through the remote power switch. You may notice the uh, bungee cord, the little strap that goes behind the camera. That's just there to take some of the weight off the focuser. Uh, hopefully that will prolong the life of the focuser. Uh, we do regular preventive maintenance but taking some of the, uh, the stress off the focuser should help also. This system is available to rent by the month. Uh, so you rent it for a month at a time, uh, fully installed. The, the computer has both Nina and Voyager installed. So you can use either one of those or both. Uh, and then we would typically set that up so that uh, there would just be a shared Dropbox folder uh, on the imaging computer that's also shared with your home computer. So you would set up the sequences in Voyager or Nina. Uh, you're fully in control of the telescope. And then, you know, by the next morning, uh, whatever images are captured get uh, downloaded to your computer through Dropbox. So this is a Takahashi FSQ 106. Uh, it also has a ASI uh, 6200. Uh, either an MM or an MC Pro. Uh, we have two cameras that we switch back and forth between this telescope and the plane wave. So either one can have either the monochrome or the color camera. Right now it's configured with the Rokinon 135 uh, sitting on top in kind of a piggyback position. The way that's attached is using a, a ZWO ring. Uh, you get the size ring that fits your camera body. So this is the, the larger diameter body so it uses the larger ring and then that's just mounted as a piggyback on top of the scope and I'm using a ZWO to Canon EOS lens mount and that gives me the right focal length um, or the right back focus I should say uh, for a Canon lens so I can just you know mount any Canon lens uh, in onto that EOS bayonet mount and this particular adapter is designed to use the ZWO filter wheel. So I can have the Canon lens and then a ZWO filter wheel and a ZWO camera and it gives me exactly the right back, back focus for that combination. I think if I were to do it again uh, I would use one of the 3D printed brackets rather than the, the ring to hold the system. 
Uh, that would also give you the option of uh, other mounting points. So for instance, uh, I could use an autofocuser with the lens. Um, depending on what filter wheel I have on there uh, with the color filter wheel, I seem to be able to go back and forth between a clear glass filter and a dual narrow band filter and still maintain focus. Uh, with the narrow band filters, I can switch between sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen, and they'll stay in focus. But I can't go between the narrow band filters and broadband red, green, and blue filters. The focus difference is just too much. So to really do a full uh, RGB plus narrow band combination with this lens setup, I would have to change mounts and put in an automatic focuser. Uh, as I mentioned, I can take the camera off of here and attach it to the FSQ-106. Uh, that's a 530 millimeter focal length, uh, and it is configured with a rotator. So, uh, you know, that I like using a rotator. Um, as I mentioned on the DreamScope, it doesn't have a rotator. And in practice, I haven't really found it to be a problem, uh, but I do like having them on the other two systems. It's sitting on a Paramount MX Plus mount that has worked for us very well. It's been out here for a few years now and not really had any trouble with it at all. And you'll notice right now I don't have a guide scope on here. Uh, that's partly because the guide camera that was here is now on the Dream Scope. Uh, so I've been running it unguided. Uh, and again, five, 10 minute focal uh, exposures unguided has not been a problem. In this case, it's on a portable pier, uh, so this system is a little bit of a nomad. It just kind of moves around to wherever there happens to be a spot open in the observatory. If we happen to rent this location to a customer, then we'll slide it over to some other spot. Uh, and right now, the computer and equipment is all just sitting on the floor underneath the portable pier, uh, rather than being you know, nicely enclosed in a cabinet. This system is available for hourly rental, so you can rent it by the hour. It's $70 for the first hour, $50 for the second, and then $40 for all additional hours on the same target. And typically what we would do is have a Zoom meeting to talk about the, the target that you have in mind and to lay out the imaging sequence. And then we schedule that to run. And when it's, when it's finished, we send you all of the light frames plus calibration frames and the way the time works is uh, we only charge for the good uh, light subs that you get. So for instance, if you schedule one hour of data, that would be typically something like uh, six 10 minute subs and that's one hour. Uh, if we have to actually shoot more than that in order to get the 10 good ones, then we shoot more than is needed and you get the 10 good ones. This last system is a plane wave CDK 12.5. So it's kind of the, the baby, kind of, kind of the, the beginner plane wave, if you will. Uh, but I find I really do like the focal length. At uh, 2450 millimeters, it has enough reach for the smaller nebula and, uh, and, and some galaxies. Uh, I'm much more of a nebula person than a galaxy person. Uh, so the, the shorter focal length really has not been a a problem for me and in fact I find it works out very nicely for a lot of the targets uh, and again it can be configured with either the color or the monochrome camera uh, the color camera has a filter wheel with a combination of a clear and a dual narrow band filter uh, the monochrome has a full LRGB uh, SHO filter set and that those are chroma uh, narrow band filters uh, three nanometer filters in that case in this case, it's sitting on a pier in our first observatory. We, we built this observatory, uh, we call it the Thistle Observatory, uh, just because there was a thistle growing there or near there when we built the observatory. But we built it really as a prototype in order to test our, our construction methods and the control systems. And we continue to use it to house the plane wave but we also use it if we're going to do a change in the way we run the control systems. Uh, we'll use the, you know, we'll test those changes up here first before we roll it out to the main observatory. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of our equipment and a little bit of a, a glimpse of how it's installed. 
Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. If you're interested in renting one of the systems, uh, obviously let us know. You can contact us through the website at utahdesertremote.com. And we have both hourly rental as well as a monthly rental on the DreamScope. And of course, if you're interested in hosting your telescope out here, we would love to talk to you about that as well. So with that, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.